Welcome to another video. We have a number theory problem here and it has to do with divisibility. Say n is a positive integer, we need to prove that 30 to the 10n plus 1 plus 5 to the 21n is divisible by 31. So no matter what the positive integer is, if you make up this number, you can easily divide it by 31. Now, the easiest way to solve a problem like this or to prove something like this is to use modular arithmetic. And that's what I'm going to do in this video. I know you could do it in other ways, especially if you want to do mathematical induction, but that's too complicated because just looking at this problem, it is too juicy to do anything else other than modular arithmetic. Let's get into the video. For the sake of those who don't know what modular arithmetic is, I am going to just do uh, maybe three or four examples just to make you know what we're going to use here. Because once you know what to use, this is a one minute kind of problem or maybe two minutes at most. At most. So let me tell you, you see the number, um, let's take the number 10. This number 10 is divisible by two. So you can say, because the remainder is going to be zero when you divide it by two, you say that this is congruent to zero mod two. It means the remainder is going to be zero when divided by two. That's the meaning of the sentence. Because divisibility problems is just telling you that, hey, we can tell that a number is divisible by another number if it is zero mod the other number. So you just want it to get zero. If you want to get zero, that's what you say. But what if we divide this number by four? What would be our mod? Well, we know that 10 will be congruent to two mod four because the remainder is going to be two when you divide it by four. Right? Yes. Now, what if we divide it by nine? What would it be? Well, the number is going to be, if you divide, 10 by 9, what will be the answer? Well, 10 will be congruent to 1 mod 9. Okay, one more. What if you divide 10 by 11? What will be the remainder? Well, the remainder is going to be 10 because 10 is smaller than 11. So 10 is congruent to 10 mod 11. But, there's a special case here. Whenever you divide a number by another number bigger than it, you can actually express it as the difference between the two numbers after you've divided by all of it. So let me give you an example. 10 mod 10 divided by 11 will have a remainder of 10, or you can say it's negative 1. 10 is congruent to negative 1 mod 11. Now, if you don't understand it, just add 11 to this. What would you get? You get your 10 back. Add 11 to this. What would you get? You're going to get 21. Okay, now watch. What would be the remainder when 21 is divided by 11? It's going to be 10. So you always get the same remainder. It doesn't matter. So the only reason we got negative 1 here is because um, when you add 11 back to this, you get your 10. So it's more like continuous addition of 11 to whatever the mod is. Add 9 to 1, what would you get? 10. Add 4 to 2, what would you get? You'll get 6. Well, it's not up to 10. Add another 4. You just keep adding 4s until you get here. Okay? So the remainder you get after you divide a multiple of the other number. So this is multiple. So this one, 8. If you divide 10 by 8, you're going to get 2, right? So we're not concerned about how many times it goes. We're just concerned about what remainder you're going to get after you've done the division. Okay. Remember that the goal we need is that when we divide these two by 31 and add the remainders together, we're supposed to get 0. That's the meaning of this expression. 
So how can you write 30 in terms of 31? Okay, this is a very easy one because what would be the remainder when you divide 30 by 31? Negative 1 or 30. Okay, so note that 30 is congruent to negative 1 mod 31. That makes sense. That was the explanation I made here. Okay, once you go above it, you can do the negative, the difference between the two numbers as a negative. Because if you want to get your 30 back, just add 31 to this, you get that. Okay, now let's look at 5. Okay, 5 is congruent to, well, it's going to be 5 mod 31. Now, this, the remainder is going to be 5 because the number of times 31 divides 5 is 0 and the remainder is 5. So it doesn't help us at all. So what you do in this case, this case is easy. In this case, you go, okay, I see that it didn't work for 5, but this 5 is supposed to be raised to 21n. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to investigate a power of 5 and see if it gives me a smaller number that I can work with. So instead of saying 5, I'm going to try 5 squared. What about 5 squared? Let's try it. 5 squared equals 25, which is congruent to what mod 31? Well, it's either you write 25 mod 31 or you write negative 6 mod 31. Negative 6 mod 31. Look, you want small numbers. You started with 5, it didn't work. You took a power of 5, you squared it, it gave you 25, but now you're dealing with negative 6. This is still a bigger number in terms of magnitude, so you don't want to work with, this is not a good option in this case. So what you want to do is try one more power above this. So let's try 5 cubed. 5 cubed is 125. If you divide 125 by 31, surprisingly, you get 1 mod 31. So this is the kind of number you're looking for, and you expect it to try them out until you find a small number before you begin your calculation. So now we have found that 30 is negative 1 mod 31, and that 5 cubed is 1 mod 31. So we're going to go back here and rewrite this mod 31. 31 and our answer is going to show up. So I just thought about it that it's better for me to rewrite this expression because this one needs some work. We have to separate 5 cubed from 5 to the 21n. So watch this. Um, observe that 5 to the 21n can be written as 5 cubed to the 7n. Do you see that? So that means we can, therefore, we can write this as 30 to the 10n plus 1 plus 5 to the 21n is the same thing as 30 to the 10n plus 1 plus 5 cubed to the 7n. Yeah, because this is still 21n, right? The power. So now, let me pull this here. So what we have is that this is now equal to, instead of writing 30, we're going to write be writing mod 31. So this is now negative 1 raised to 10n plus 1 plus. Instead of writing 5 cubed, we're going to be writing 1 raised to 7n. Everything is now mod 31. 31. Let me put this in parenthesis here. So what you have written is in mod 31, or is mod 31. So a negative 1 raised to any power is either 1 or minus 1. It is 1 if this power is even. It is negative 1 if the power is odd. Looking at this, because this is an integer, 10 times an integer is always even. And an even number plus 1 is, is always odd. So this power is odd. So this stays as minus 1. Plus, this is 1. 1 raised to power any finite number is 1.
guess what? Minus 1 plus 1 is 0. We have just shown that no matter what n is, this expression here is always 0 mod 31. 30 to the 10n plus 1 plus 5 to the 21n is divisible by 31. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.